Um, Maurice, first of all, we're going to, I don't want any Ohio State talk until the end because that, that, that was the, but I, I love the guard. I love the guard. But, um, I don't want to, I don't want to spoil the mood before we get into fence riders. Uh, and I don't want to get on too big of a tangent here, but your, what, what value do you place on TJ Watt as a disruptor? Is he in the discussion for the best defensive player in the league? Is he the best? Of, where is he for you? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't keep up with the TJ Watt too much, so I will be reaching to uh, try to act like I knew the answer. All right, we um, but I, I don't know. We, we'll, yeah, I don't. We I, can I, totally I, I couldn't that. even tell you. But we're not going to take that answer for fence <coughs> fence riders. You're going to have to pick a side. I'm going to no. make you. Uh, McNuggets, you want to start with the? <laughs> well, before with we do that, one? yeah. Before I we know do Maurice that. was. I saw. Oh him. yeah, 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 yeah. He was hanging out with, with my guy Icky Woods at what? the Bengals Browns game. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the picture there. No. At the the Bengals Bills. Not Bengals Bills game. Not Bengals Bills. Sorry. (laughs) So you were obviously there and saw this incident take place in person. As a former player and being there in person, what was that like? Yeah, it was crazy. Uh, The irony is that everybody in the stadium thought it was uh, his leg at first. So uh, the play had happened. The guy caught the ball and he ran into him. And uh, when he got up and he fell back down, everybody, I'm talking about everybody in the stadium, thought it was uh, his leg because – uh, the way he was sitting, like his legs were cocked out. And then everybody seemed to get serious when you started to see all of the uh, the Bills players come off the sideline. And uh, just imagine the people at home probably had uh, more real-time information than the people in the stadium sure. just because there was no TV zone or anything that was going on. And so then when they, um, they had four, I don't know if they showed this on TV, but all of the players have formed a circle around the player. And I was like, man, I've never seen that in my entire time, either watching football, playing football or anything. And so they thought it was uh, like serious. And so then I seen uh, Adam Schefter and um, what is it, Booker? I think that's his name. The other gentleman from ESP, and they start Booker McFarland. Those guys that came on TV and started to explain it. But you can visibly see uh, when the Bengals players had left the uh, sideline and they went onto the uh, field. You can see people going over to whatever was taking place on the ground. Everybody knows now with CPR, but they were going over to the player on the ground and like looking at him, and then they were visibly walking away. And I was like, man, this is serious. And so the whole conversation about like, like it was people in the stands, like, yo, like the game is over. If you see this many people who are going next to the going next to the guy while he's on the ground, you know, and looking at him and walking away. And so then after they cleared the field, and uh, the, the ambulance was on the field probably I don't know 10, 15 minutes before they even got him up in it, and then moved off the field. And so it was a lot going on. And then it came to a point where they like um, they were showing the the coaches in the tunnel. And you can just tell by body language alone uh, that it, that the game was about to be called. And then you've seen all of the staffs, like, packing up the equipment. And so then we got left out of there. But it, it was two things from that. Like, the first thing was that um, you, don't even, you don't even realize that this is even a thing. So you have so much intensity. Like, uh, like the game of the magnitude, it was a big game. It was packed. It was crazy. And it had to be, like, you know, 55, 60 degrees out there. And you had people like um, you know rooting for rooting for each other's side, but then when everybody realized what was going on, um, I didn't go to or I don't even I don't know if this is the right analogy, so I don't want to get uh, pin 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 for this, but you kind of felt like whatever nine eleven would have felt like after nine eleven, you know what I'm saying? Like it was a tragic situation that happened, and everybody in the stadium was like, "Yo, like this guy's health or." It was all one team, uh, uh, just, right, Maurice? It felt like all one team it, at that it point. Was, it was one thousand percent, too, like yes. you know. Yeah, I don't even care who you came there to root for. I don't care what you thought prior to that. Uh, but every every single person, like there was nobody saying like, "Oh, you know, I, I wasted my money and came to the game, or I called off of work, or anything like that." I'm talking about the the entire stadium. Once they found <laughs> out the severity of it, like walking back out and walking through like the suites and the club level, it, it was it was some of everybody, you know. People can say some ignorant stuff when they're drunk and when they think like, you know, football is that important. But, you know, everybody left and it was uh, after that, everybody was just trying to figure out, you know, did the guy pass away? And so a lot of people mm. thought like, you know, it was it was it was r- real severe. And so, you know, nobody knew even even now, you know, and I don't know if I don't know if I'm not getting an update on Twitter or I just don't or I'm not paying attention. Like, I still don't know what's going on with the guy now. Uh, so it was it was a lot, you know, it was it was a lot. And it was uh, it was definitely like a surreal moment. You know, I, I didn't. I didn't even think nothing like that would happen. You know, going into the game. Well, his condition is improving, and and some might even say that the improvement has been dramatic. Um, he is on much less oxygen now than he was. Um, his lungs are beginning to heal. 
Um, we've, we're showing a tweet now from Diana Rossini of ESPN where she says that he's even been able to hold the hands of some family members and friends. Um, I know his father yesterday addressed the Bills team and the mood with the team was markedly improved after they heard from the father. Uh, so it, it does seem like everything is going in the right direction. Um, he's still, as far as we know, we, I haven't seen that the hospital has changed his condition. Bull, have you seen that or McNuggets? I think he's still in critical, critical. condition. He's still yeah. in critical still in condition, critical. but he's awake, which is important. Which is huge. Yeah. So he's doing much better. Um, yeah, and, and Bull, thank you. I forgot. Is he, is he, I, I wanted to talk. We wanted to talk to you about that, and I'd forgotten about that. So I'm glad. I'm glad we got your. Is thoughts. he still in Cincinnati? He is. Yeah. yeah he probably. I would imagine it would be a would while be before he was yeah, transported, yeah, yeah, yeah. but um, he is still in Cincinnati. Um, the Lee, or the Bills are going. They went through uh, meetings and, and a walkthrough. I'm not sure why they would do a but walkthrough. They didn't on practice Wednesday. today. No, yeah. uh, but they are preparing. According to some things yeah. I read yesterday, they're preparing to play the Patriots. Sunday, and then what happens after that? But still, there's a million scenarios. We're not even going to get into it because uh, it's all conjecture, speculation. But we do know that the league is currently trying to formulate a plan moving forward. How are they going to settle home field advantage? How are they going to settle the seating in the AFC playoffs? Um, we're still awaiting word from the NFL on that. I imagine we would get that, guys. I would think before the games this weekend. I would think today, probably, especially I, once you get the news that he's awake. It changes and so everything. It feels yeah. like okay, yeah. he's going to be okay at some level. That's just my sense of the things. I don't know. I, I would agree with that. Yeah. That I think maybe they'll announce the neurological is the biggest. Yeah. yeah the it's fact probably. that yeah. he's huge. He's, yeah. Because there was concern that he may have suffered some brain For damage. Sure. Right. Because they didn't know how long he was going without oxygen. Right. right. Yeah. Um, I in talking to some doctors that cover teams and that's their job for a living and they're all. Um, I was invited yesterday by the Cleveland Clinic and I hope we can all go to this uh, next. And they do it every year. They do injury simulation drills um, for all of the pro sports teams. Cleveland Clinic runs it. Wow. And it typically not open to the media, but they did invite us to come in. And I think that's – I want to pull that curtain back and see because what we've learned through all this is the people that were on the field uh, are, are the best at what they do. And he was in the best possible care. And as, as we learn more about this, we're going to likely learn – some of the doctors I talked to yesterday said we're likely going to learn – that their actions, not just their quick response, but knowing what to do, yep. almost certainly saved his life. They did it exactly right. They did it textbook, yep. and that's – so I do want to go um, – he said they're going to reach out to me again. They do it – I think they do it in the early summer. Um, but they, they said they'll, they'll, they'll invite us. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push to get as many of us that want to go to go. I'm hoping they'll let us bring a camera. Yeah. Um, and he also said that they will make uh, doctors and experts from the clinic that run this seminar. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I've never even seen something done like this at an NFL level. So yeah, it might I'm be really a kind of our first look at what they're simulating, yeah. the injuries they're simulating and, the, and their response to it afterwards. For anyone who's interested, <laughs> I never I never do this, but I, it fits. Our Jordan Rodriguez, who's based in L.A. for the athletic, did a story on, OK, what does this mean? The NFL's response team. It is terrific. Anyone who's interested about like. How it how they how this works? She covered it all. It was a terrific story. Go to the athletic and find it. I I, I would like to read that. Um, one last point to make, and this is something for another show on another day because it's a long and deep topic. We did a segment on this at ESPN in 2012. It's the last I really heard of it till someone <coughs> emailed me yesterday and said this is something that should probably be looked at. And the, the, the thesis of, of, of our segment in 2012 was, is the league outsizing itself? And the premise is that the players are all bigger, faster, and stronger, not by a little bit, right. by significant margins. And the question that we tried to answer in 2012 was, are we going to reach a tipping point where the league is, where the players are just too big for the overall general safety of, it's players yeah. and another topic for another day, but it is fascinating. Right. And there are some people that say we're there now. Well, I think Mark Cuban oh. said Can I say football would go the way of boxing. Go ahead. He did. Maurice. He did. Go ahead, Maurice. No, I, I, I'm glad you said that. I, I won't be long winded. I think surface plays a major role in a lot of what you see too. Uh, having your foot caught in that turf or sprinting on that turf yeah. and there's the, the traction is tight. When you collide with people, it is totally different than the give on a grass field. And I know that, that, that it, it, I, I, don't, I don't know how to explain it other than when you're playing, when you're propelled and you're running and you have leverage and when you collide with two people, 
there's just so much force, right? And I know the economic impact they're talking about is the maintenance of the field and all the other hoopla with it. And I'm not being like this old, like this old school person, but I'm telling you 1,000%, the, the surface that these guys play on and the, the weight training from younger ages, you can, you know, take a look online. People 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 years old, they're doing strength and conditioning drills, just, just training and training, sports nutrition, all that stuff. Technique is different. Like, now you have people who've been at the professional ranks coming to teach younger guys. So guys are just getting better sooner, faster. And and I think you're right. I, I've never heard anybody have that discussion, but it's definitely a discussion that somebody should take a deeper dive into. And I'm pretty yeah. sure if they can prove it yeah. uh, on a lot of different fronts. And to your point on the turf, uh, I, I saw something about two weeks ago the league put – I don't know if it was the league that put it out, but somebody said for the NFL to replace all of their turf fields with natural grass would cost – in excess of $20 million. And I thought, really? We're going to talk about, we're going to talk about $20 million (laughs) when you're talking about, because G Bush, I'm sure you played on natural grass and the, the, New turf. The artificial oh. turf was different, but Maurice is 1,000% right. Play no this new turf. Turf. I played, I played <laughs> no, yeah. no, don't you start bowl. that. Were you at the rubber bowl? <laughs> yeah. Maurice, Maurice came to Canton McKinley against War Hardy, and you was playing on that old Astro turf too. <laughs> you was out there. Yeah. Rubber bowl game, you was out there, bro. Yeah, I played on that old Astro yeah. turf though. The turf like where you, 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 yeah, it's concrete. You fall <laughs> and roll up all your sleeves, skin, everything. It, yeah, it, it's a, it was a step <laughs> forward in progress when we went from AstroTurf to the field turf. Right. But there are ongoing studies right now about the prevalence That's of the, injury, particularly yep. lower extremity injuries. Knees. To your point, Maurice, when you put your foot in that and you're and, and you're collided <laughs> from a different direction. That stuff is so strong, it's not like you could lift a divot out of a real grass field. Right. Oftentimes, that's what saves a player from suffering yes. a severe knee injury. knee injury. That doesn't happen on turf. I blew the mine knee out. gives before the turf gives. I blew mine out on a non-contact. I just went and pivoted, boom, gone. Yeah, like That turf is dangerous, man. Something to talk about. And I do think that once the season ends and we're – hunting for topics. I do think this outsizing the league outsizing itself yeah. is a fair discussion because in 12 when we did it on ESPN, we had doctors that were sports physicians that have studied this and they said the, the sizes of these players. He, he, I remember one doctor gave us an example of and I can't remember the player's name. I'd never heard of him. 340, 68 and ran a sub 4840. He said that that's <laughs> that, that's a Mack truck on a football. Yeah. <laughs>